Good morning, folks. We've got the start of the earthquake uptick, major weather alerts, the cosmos, arctic ice, and more, but we are starting with our star over at spaceweathernews.com. Finding the last 24 hours on the sun, we're mostly calm, still no sunspots, still no solar flares. You can easily see the southern coronal hole swinging in there. A small eruptive feature occurred near the southern polar crown as a filament did what we saw in the north earlier this week, did not escape the corona. As for what did escape, the solar wind here at Earth is even calmer than it was yesterday. Did get our phi angle shift overnight which sets us up to connect with interplanetary magnetic fields from the next coronal hole. Here it is again in 211 angstroms where the dark core just below the equator coming in clearly stands out compared to the patchier dark regions ahead of it. We've seen our largest earthquake in a week and some increased activity at various other locations. The watch is expected to peak this weekend while rising through today. Let's go on to the weather where we've got tier 1 watches and we're starting with Greece. The southern islands, just the first in line to be in the way of this storm which is heading northeast in a few hours. We've got double tropical alerts for the West Pacific where a super typhoon is making its way across Japan the next few days while another storm is forecast to follow in its footsteps only about a week later. And at the exact same time, same thing can be said for Hurricane Rosa. This one is about to ram the Americas and jump up through the southwest and into the Midwest while another storm is going to follow that one, approaching the coastline slightly more to the south. Let's look a bit further out, link below to the Weather Channel's latest fall forecast for the United States. The cold V descends much of next month in their estimation while that pattern completely reverses as we head into the holiday season and winter approaches. Hard to complain about the December forecast really. So let's zip way way out to the stars, or rather galaxies. This is Abel 2142, a massive cluster embedded in superheated gas, which they think is only half of a cosmic dance with another group. With Sloan's optical view and Chandra's x-ray view, we look at a nearby grouping to Abel, pulling back the optical to leave x-ray signatures revealing a grouping that appears to be falling into Abel, which is visible at the bottom of the screen. If a jet had existed at Abel, it would shoot right through that approaching cluster and possibly through that intermediate return which looks too bright in x-rays to merely be excited gas emission. Either way, that top part looks like a comet made of small galaxies racing towards the larger Abel below, and there's a little scout out ahead to check things out first, presuming that little guy in the middle is going that way too. If not, maybe we've got something else going on. So folks, I have checked dozens of articles about the latest Arctic sea ice, which I do guarantee is the sixth lowest in the satellite record. That fact is true. However, the first few on the low ice list were all in the few years before this one, back to the lowest point of all in 2012. That would be the dotted line. We're at the blue line now, and yes, we're still way below average in our recovery, but about half the surface losses from the record low in 2012 have been recovered. Lastly, folks, turns out methane isn't quite what we thought in terms of climate change. Two critical pieces here. First, the methane appears to have a different effect based on what part of the world it's found. Turns out it's the arid desert regions where its heating potential is actually worst, almost to the point of calling it restricted to those regions, and not to the rest of the planet where they also found that their model should have cloudy regions upping the methane effect, going the other way. However, this does not use Princeton's cloud forcing science published in the last year. It is not cited anywhere in that work. And the color effect notwithstanding, the scale here is less than half of the arid versus moist region forcing. Folks, there are only two days left in the second pre-order period of Weatherman's Guide to the Sun, second edition. It's the layman's explanation of solar forcing of weather, earthquakes, human health, and technological distress. That discount for waiting out the few days of pre-order until the batch arrives will end on October 1st. The books, conference tickets, and more are found at otf.cells.com. If you've not seen all the free videos on suspiciousobservers.org homepage, it is well worth your time to get acquainted. We've got your wind maps and shots of our star to close, and we greatly appreciate your support. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now. It's 4.20 a.m. in the new valley of the sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.